Well, we are back with the three-year-olds now, and uh, a lot of horses raced very, very good this week. Uh, first one is Ale Sun. I think she surprised everybody. I, I let on she didn't surprise me, but she did a little bit. I know the day before when I spoke to Jason, uh, we're like, geez, you know, what do we do? Maybe we get her in the in the if she draws into the consolation for sixty, we could sell her. We'd sell her shortly after there. Do we keep her? Is there a class for her? Put her in to go in uh, in the meadows, and man, oh man, did she race good! Third beat, uh, what a half length or length in 55 and four, last quarter in 28. I would say there isn't anybody that can argue that wasn't the best race of her life because it was. She looked awesome. She really, really likes the surface at the meadows for sure. Arctic Force, talk about horses liking the surface. Second beat a half length in 51 and three the other day. He looked really, really good. Beach Boutique is out. She need a little reset, a little time off. We'll bring her back in in a few weeks. Uh, Bottle Red was second in 51 and three the other day. Now she was beat 10 lengths. She paced 53, but that's what she can pace. Tony Hall said he was happy with her. Thought that, you know, that horse was just head and shoulders above, but that she raced very, very well. So he's back down on her this week, obviously. So Tony Hall will be driving Bottle of Red again. Cabernet, she races tonight. Cabernet races tonight at Flamborough. She's got the seven hole you know, with a bunch of horses that can go as fast as her. It's not, it's not looking like a great night, but we'll see. Bottle of Red will race tonight at Flamborough Downs. So last night for you. Uh, Canadian Titan will be off for a little bit while longer. I'll let you guys know when she's coming back in. I, I'll have to go over my notes again. Uh, she needed three months at the farm before she could be turned out, and that's exactly... She's probably coming up on those three months soon, but I'll let you guys know uh, about that soon enough. Capistrano raced on Friday night. Harry wants a veterinarian to, uh, veterinarian specializing in throats to look at her. She's always made noise her whole life, pulling up or when she makes a break. And To be honest, I think Harry's just looking maybe to shut her down for a few weeks and you know, try and find a spot for her for the winter, and I can't blame him for doing that. I mean, obviously, it's something on the back of my mind also. Uh, so we'll get her looked at, but she's going to get maybe a little time just to try. Hopefully, we can get her back and get her in a class where she can do, because 2020 has certainly not been her year by any stretch of the imagination. Compass Rose DC got butchered in Delaware last week, parked the whole way. She's in to go on Wednesday at the Meadows. Going to try and race her a little bit easier. I've left with her last two. I think we're going to race her from off the pace this week and see how she responds to that. Don't believe me, just watch. Uh, was at the quarter in 29 seconds. They went 51 and 3 the other day. So, math being what it is, very difficult for her to make up very much ground, or for him to make up very much ground. He ended up 6th or 7th, but he's 53. He's got to be up near the action, I think, this guy, and he just hasn't had a chance to be. Globe Trotting is in to go this week again, likely picked to win. She raced really, really good her last start. Dave Pallone is going to drive her again on Tuesday. I'm in race two, and I'm going to go bite to eat, and I'm going to walk up to the grandstand because it's open on Tuesday, and I'm going to watch Globe Trotting race. And hopefully she does well. Uh, Harness AM did well last week, and she's back in that class again. This is the first horse of the year. I might be convinced to say maybe they will claim her. I, I don't know. I don't really care, to be honest, if they do or they don't. I mean, we have about four horses that can fit that class. No one is that much better than the other. Sebastian Yu is about to qualify, and he will qualify on Thursday. And I think on his better day, he's every bit as good as, as Harness AM. And that's the same class. So if they want her, come get her. I think it's okay if she happens to win that day. You're looking at roughly 20 grand. Um, roughly 20 grand for, for Harness AM. So... Uh, with the purse money if she was to win and I suspect she'll be a heavy favorite the way she raced the other day so we'll see I'll play it alone is really close to qualifying again this is exactly what we wanted first part of October return for this horse they're still going around 54 55 but this is a sharp colt and these are the same horses that race every single week the same ones that were racing all summer so I think we get a sharp horse coming back I rather like the way we put them away so hopefully that pans out and turns out well for us you can turn that off now. and we will um we will see. I don't know when we're qualifying him this week or next, but we'll get him qualified very soon. Johan is in to go, as I said to Steve, my partner and one of our major partners on Johan. Um, still a little red stuff through the Lasex the other day, and I think that was just the, the residual of, of uh, allergy season. So hopefully we can get him over that and get him going on the right track again. We found a way now to keep him quiet post spray him quiet, put him on the gate and race him where he's not making mistakes or looking to make mistakes. So that's a bonus. Let's see if we can turn that into a real positive and get him back on track. Uh, Miss Brampton Beast, again, ready 1st of November, Kevin said. Muscle Chrome, she'll be ready. She's ready. She's been ready. 
uh, we just need a bunch of slow horses to race against. But uh, I think <laughs> we can find those very, very soon. As I said, as soon as London opens up, probably start qualifying her, qualify her a couple of times this coming month in October. We'll get her ready. <laughs> Nancy Allison was terrible last night, but she trotted. As I said to Johnny, Johnny was all upset about her. I said, just relax. Take your time. It's not a big deal. Nancy also went from being a horrible animal that you couldn't control to just slow. We know she's fast, so I'm not going to rush to any judgment with her. We get all the time in the world. My plan is to breed Nancy Allison. That's my plan. And I'd like to get a good mark on her and put some money away. Yes. So let's get her to a place where we can not be first over with her. Race her from off the pace like we did the first time Anthony Hahn raced her and then see how she races. That's what I'd like to see. And I haven't talked to Anthony Hahn. I'll catch up to him. Uh, I'll send him a text message tonight. Just ask him if, if there's a problem with her or whether he just felt he had to move her. It, can we stay in with her? Um, I hope the answer is yes. Where are we at here now? Nancy Allison need your opinion we'll race next week gets a bet work done on her she's prepping for the semifinals for the grassroots path of totality is in with the nine hole on Tuesday she's in tough too uh, I am going to go out of there with her a little bit I think I'll probably land in the two hole or three hole and hopefully she'll race good for us on Tuesday really blue chip really looks so much better she's put on at least 250 pounds from the last time I saw her that's not true I saw her two weeks ago from when I saw her, when I stopped with her, she'll be ready to go. I imagine they'll start training her again this week, coming week or week after. Rooney Blue Chip is now in the Meadows at Tim Twaddle Stable. We'll race him in the Nomers 2 this coming week. Sebastian, you will qualify on Thursday. I think we rectified the issues with him. I'm not going to say it's the issues that caused him to make the breaks previous to the qualifier last week, but we rectified the problem that made him make a break in the qualifier. That's fixed. I believe Sebastian, you will be no problem qualifying on Thursday. Uh, spend that money. Um, so she had, I told you guys in the last video, she touched that left hind leg. Not a big deal. We're just trying to get that bump cooled out. Um, she did hit it. It's nothing serious, but it's painful, a little sore for her. So we're just trying to put a little bit of work into her, but let her relax and get over that. And then we're going to probably race her. Another horse we could race in that harness AM class. Go ahead and claim her. We got lots of horses coming for you guys at the Meadows. Spirit of Dio. She's racing uh, next week. Here's a little news flash. It said to Tim, got a little problem. I'm going to be in Lexington, which she's supposed to race in the Meadows. Now, theoretically, I can get a plane from Lexington to Pittsburgh, I believe. It gets me there about an hour after the second day of Lexington starts. So it really matters on what we're looking at the second day of Lexington. If we're not looking anything until after the first 40 or 50, 60 horses maybe, go through the ring at Lexington, then I can do it. Mathematically, I can do it, and I'll be happy. Yeah, well, yeah, Steve's there a bit. That's right. So I theoretically could come back. I could be convinced. Try and convince me. I could be convinced to come back to drive a Spirit of Deal on Tuesday, potentially. So her race next week will be on Tuesday. Yeah, not this Tuesday. The following Tuesday, she had a little scoped a little mucus in Toronto. I know people are saying, oh, James can't drive her. James gave her a perfect trip. She came up a little flat. They scoped her after a little bit of mucus. Did the traveling do it? Was she a little sick after her race in the Meadows? I, I don't know. All I know is that she was. We made the decision to give her an extra week. The way she's been pounding them in the Meadows, I'm pretty sure she had a smile on her horse face when she came off the truck uh, and realized where she was again. So she'll be in to go next week at the Meadows. Will I drive her? I'm going to try my hardest to. Let's see if I can. Uh, Trafalgar had some vet work done on her. She's prepping also, as Margot pointed out to me, for the semifinals. Uh, she's got the semifinals of the grassroots also coming up. Watch Avenue and Zeb Sunshine. We turned them out specifically geared to race them, hopefully at Mohawk in the winter. I guess, how did Kevin put it? He said, Zeb Sunshine was rough all summer and had a lot more power. Travis said if he was pacing this good in the summer, he would have paced 52 in Georgian. Good. Watch Avenue, a little bumpy also. Going to turn him in. Remember, these horses were ready to go at the pandemic time, right? It's not like, I don't care if they show four or five starts. They were ready to race when the pandemic hit. So they've been ready since March. And going, we droned them all winter. Uh, pretty hard speeds all winter in preparation of hopefully racing. And they never got to race till June. So it's not that shocking. They're a little bit tired. A little rest for them, bring them back. Every reason to believe that with a watered down field, hopefully in the winter, you'll see a better Watch Avenue and Zeb Sunshine at Mohawk. So those are your three-year-olds. We've got the brands to talk about. We'll talk about the brands when I come back in just a minute. 
but overall pretty good run all summer pretty good run right now with the whole burn but most definitely the three-year-olds across the board talk to you guys in a minute